Democratic Party leader Luzim Basha says that criminal justice in the country serves organized crime and that Banju Stako, according to him, should be imprisoned. Lawyers are divided over the second decision by Duras' court for Valbona Sacco, former Justice Minister Edward Halimi, labeling it a seizure of justice. There will be fewer students in university this year. About 2,800 students have started the procedures to pursue their higher education abroad, while applications to universities here at home will start at the end of July. It's 6 o'clock on Saturday, the 20th July, 2019. Good evening and thank you for tuning in to RTV Aura's English edition. My name is Oliver, bringing you the only daily update of the local Albanian news translated into English. Making headlines tonight, the Democratic Party leader, Luzim Basha, has once again returned to allegations against Vanjus Dako over his alleged links to organized crime and subversion of justice. Just one day after the Duras court's decision to recognize the mandate of the city's new mayor, the opposition leader has accused Dako as being the main actor in carrying out the prime minister's own interests to evade justice. The DP leader stated, Eddie Rama controls local government, justice, and every other institution in Duras through Vanju Stako and his ties to organized crime. However, according to Basha, he does not believe in Albanian justice, as this so-called justice only works for the prime minister, a disaster for ordinary citizens. According to Basha, the only solution is the removal of Eddie Rama from office, stating, justice throughout Albania is today in the hands of crime and the criminal socialist party organization. We have gone back to the dark times when justice was a criminal party. With this kind of justice, there will never be any politicians arrested, nor will there ever be criminals put in jail. With this kind of justice, handcuffs are just for ordinary people. The liberation of our country from the rule of Eddie Rama and his gang in government is a necessity for democracy, the rule of law, and the stability of the country, said Basha. On Friday, Duras' court recognized the mandate of Mayor Valbona Sacco, even despite the fact that the same court rejected it just two days ago. Next up tonight, more uncertainty in Duras today. The decision by the court of Duras, which did not recognize Valbona Sacco's mandate just two days ago, with the justification that the June 30th elections were illegal, now reviews the case again as the Socialist Party decide not to send it to the appellate court, but again to the same court. These two decisions by the judiciary have confronted lawyers who, as happened before with the presidential decrees, have different interpretations for the law. Former Justice Minister Edward Halimi has called the actions by the Socialist Party leader, Eddie Rama, absurd and a departure from justice. Halimi stated, quote, this is the absurdity of administering justice today. The content for me is no more important than how our state of justice is currently being used. Each of the decisions is presumed to be lawful, although its effects may be interpreted according to the content. One judge issues guilty, while another issues innocent within the same 24-hour time span for the same offense. Justice cannot be more creative than that. Meanwhile, Samir Vishai thinks differently. He considers the Socialist Party's request and the jurisdiction of the Duras court to review this issue to be justified, stating, the Socialist Party's request is legal, and while it is an electoral request, unlike the first request regarding Valbona Sacco, it is the responsibility of the court of Duras to review it. The same request was made by the Socialist Party at the court of Tirana for the mayor of Vora, Agim Kaimaku, because of the first decision, which was declared incompetent by the court in issuing the mandate. And now moving on, according to the road police director, Mitat Tola, the most problematic axes around the country are those that lead to tourist destinations, while a new plan to address the problem has been drafted since April and May. To ensure the safety of vehicles, the road police have also provided additional services since the most frequent violations during this time are speeding and alcohol consumption. Among other things, Tola says that a novelty of the season has been the issuance of fines to the offender's own home address. As for road accidents, Tola added that within the six-month period, compared to the previous year, there is a decrease of incidents. However, road signs still need to be improved to prevent any fatalities. As director, Tola gave an interview to reporters on the Tirana Duras Highway where, coincidentally, an accident was recorded behind his back. Fortunately, it resulted in only minor vehicular damages.
Confindustry is urging the government to withdraw from the unsolicited concession for the privatization of fuel gauge control services, calling it a completely unjustified process and suggesting that it is in complete opposition to the public interest in the long term. In an announcement issued by Confindustry, it states, in all the accompanying legal acts, there is no financial explanations for reducing the long-term abuses and benefits for the economy, state budget, businesses, and citizens. 70 million euros will be issued by the state budget on behalf of the private monopoly against an investment estimated at half a million euros. In the meantime, Confindustry estimates that the loss of financial service revenues, state institutions not having any practical technological worker-based opportunities to control the contract enforcement by the private operator, stating the private monopoly concessionaire would be able to operate without fear of inspections or verifications by state agencies, while certain operators could together abuse the number of sales to the detriment of consumers, thus leaving them completely unprotected. In practice, it would render the government's right meaningless to unilaterally break the contract, even if within the first 12 months a violation by the private company occurs. Moreover, Confindustry suggests that any such delivery of state responsibilities for consumer protection to the hands of a private monopoly threatens to have far-reaching financial consequences for the national economy, including for citizens, businesses, the state budget, and even competition between operators. Switching to a private monopoly carries significant risks, which could increase the abuse of fuel sales to citizens and businesses, which are currently in the range of 20 to 25 million euros per year, and in effect, exacerbate the final price. It is no secret that fuel prices in the country are high. Data shows that in Albania, despite being one of the poorest countries in the region, is nevertheless among the top 25 countries in the world with the highest fuel prices. Okay, it's that time of year again. Thousands of vacationers head to coastal beaches along the country to have a little fun in the sun. But city officials in Shinjini are concerned. Apparently, there are no public spaces for vacationers on city's beaches. The issue was raised during a meeting organized by the prefect along with locals in addressing the progress of the tourist season. Meanwhile, the minister of Shinjini, Jokdera, said that in the city there are three public beaches and standard areas for tourists. The decision by the Council of Ministers determined that 20% of the beaches should be public, while 80% should be given up for private utilization. In less than a month, 2,800 graduates begin the procedures of attending their studies abroad. Europe still remains the most coveted place for the youth in terms of its opportunities and living conditions. Compared to just a year ago, the number of graduates leaving the country is similar. But there are also many people who, after finishing their studies, have returned to Albania once again. About 1,000 young people have returned from 2017. For those who still see their future in Albania, applications for university will start at the end of July. The youth park will be transformed into an all-encompassing environment where there will be dedicated spaces for the elderly, children, and pets. The mayor of Tirana area of Valia inspected the start of construction, which will bring about not only an aesthetic improvement, but is also expected to increase the number of visitors tenfold. The mayor stated, we will have a focus on children, which are the passion of the municipality. More good news is the creation of dedicated spaces in the park for those wishing to play with their four-legged friends and at the same time providing security for all those who visit the park. The project also includes a fenced area. Tirana is today a city with a community of animals that need to be respected. They too should have their space, said Vliai. The Tirana municipality's investment at the youth park foresees the creation of several mini churches, children's squares, mazes, playgrounds, games for the elderly, chess, dominoes, and much more. The construction of a water basin is also being carried out, culminating in the Monument of Independence and ending at the end of the park, while the alleys will be paved with decorative stones. It is revealed that even LED lighting and the network of reserve lines for internet, irrigation, a drainage system, and a bicycle parking will be included in the project. 
And finally tonight, as we try our hardest to stay cool these hot summer days, a big portion of Albanians are, despite the abundance of time, not reading any books. Artan Drago, a bookstore seller, says he has not sold a single book in three days while stressing that the act of surfing on the internet has declared a war on reading. According to him, the economic situation in the country is also one of the consequences for the decreasing number of readers. For many citizens, the low level of reading is shameful. And the main cause, they say, again, is the internet. Just a while back, Instat published data showing that one million Albanians did not read a single book in more than a year. And that's the news across the country today. Thank you for watching our English edition this evening, and be sure to join us again every Monday to Saturday at 6 p.m. for the latest news from Albania. Once again, on behalf of RTV Aura, thank you and have a good night.